Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITians. Hello friends, we are back with another important problem series of statistical mechanics and this is problem set 2. I request you to watch the previous videos of statistical mechanics to understand the subject and learn how to solve problems and we will also discuss more important problems in the upcoming videos and we will finish statistical mechanics so much efficient way that you can evaluate and you can easily perform you can easily solve the questions at the examination hall so friends do you know that we have also a free test link in our portal so if you don't know or if you know but you haven't registered in our portal you can register here and get the free test and also you can give our test series for your benefit and the subject wise test series uh, that is on going to be held on 18 september 2020 the topic is mathematical and full length test series three is going to be going to held on 30th september 2020 so best wishes so let's start the video the first question it has come also in csir gate net exam so the question is very important question actually a system of n interacting spin half particles is placed in an external magnetic field h the behavior of the entropy of the system as a function of energy is given by which graph option a b c d three different curves are given here so first you have to find out the meaning of this question look here the n non-interacting spin half particles you can think of as a electrons okay or paramagnetic materials where the electrons are non-interacting and the paramagnetic material is placed in an external magnetic field h so what will be the behavior of the entropy of the system that is s of the system as a function of energy so how to find out the answer you can easily remember the option that for this system this kind of system where the spin half particles the, in an external magnetic field b or h it can be parallel to the external magnetic field it can be perpendicular to the external magnetic field if external magnetic field along x direction sorry it can be anti parallel to the ex external magnetic field not perpendicular so for the parallel the energy will be minus mu bh for anti parallel it is plus mu bh now the standard graph for s versus e for this kind of system is a you can remember it or i will give you the solution that how do you find out okay so let's understand the solution so there are n non-interacting particles each particle has magnetic moment mu so parallel the energy is minus mu dot e where we are taking this energy as plus epsilon and for the anti-parallel minus mu dot of minus minus of minus mu dot e okay you can also un, uh, like this way so uh, for anti-parallel configuration we take e equals to minus epsilon so one is the parallel configuration energy and another is the anti-parallel configuration energy and the number of particles that are parallel to the magnetic field that is n plus and number of particles that are anti-parallel to the magnetic field that is n minus so total energy that is e or mod of e where without consideration whether it is parallel or not or anti-parallel we can write as mu h because mu dot b or mu dot h is mu h cos theta and theta is 0 or 180 degree so mu h okay so plus mu h or minus mu h can be possible for the two configuration one is the parallel and another is for anti-parallel so for the n particles we can write e that is the total energy is n into epsilon so whenever you are facing this kind of questions, what you have to do, you have to find out the population in the different configurations. So the total number of in, uh, total energy that is n epsilon, n epsilon can be written as n plus epsilon minus n minus epsilon, where n plus epsilon is the energy for that. Those are parallel to the magnetic field and n minus epsilon energies for those are anti-parallel to the magnetic field and n can be written as n plus minus n minus and total number of particles that is capital n can be written as n plus 
plus n minus. So simplify it. Write n minus in terms of capital N and small n, and write n plus in terms of capital N and small n. This is kind of random walk problem or binomial distribution. So in binomial distribution lecture, we have already learned how to find out the number of microstates. So the number of microstates here that is can be denoted as omega that is n factorial that is total number of particles divided by n minus factorial into n plus factorial. So ln omega is ln n factorial minus of ln n minus factorial minus ln n plus factorial. Apply Starling formula that is a ln n factorial equals to n ln n minus n. So whenever you find ln n factorial, you put n ln n minus n, ln n minus factorial, you put n minus ln n minus minus n minus, ln n plus factorial, you put n plus ln n plus minus n plus. Okay. Now simplify it and rearrange the terms in terms of capital N and small n, which I have done it here. Now the apply expansion of the log, log of one plus x and log of one minus x. And what are the formulas? So you have to remember some important expansion formulas like sine x equals to x minus x cubed by factorial three plus x to the power five by factorial five minus x to the power seven by factorial seven. Cos x we can write one minus x square by factorial two plus x to the power four by factorial four minus x to the power six by factorial six. Exponential x or e to the power x can be written as one plus x by one factorial plus x square by factorial two plus x cubed by factorial three. Log of one plus x can be written as x minus x square by two plus x cubed by three minus x to the power four by four plus x to the power five by five. Okay, so log of one plus minus n by n can be written as x that is n by small n by capital N is the x here. So x minus n square by two n square because x square by two that is n by n whole square plus n by n whole cube into three one by three. So this way we can write, we can expand. Now simplify it. That is ln omega will give you the result that ln omega equals to minus ln half minus n square by twice capital N. So, or ln omega can be written as put here n into epsilon that is e. So n ln half minus e by epsilon whole square divided by twice n. So simplify it again. That is ln omega equals to minus ln minus half. Uh, you can uh, one by two. You can write it as minus n take minus n common, and ln one by two you can write as minus ln two plus e by epsilon whole square divided by twice n square because you are taking n common. Okay. So a is equals to k ln omega or you can put here multiply it with k that is n k into ln 2 minus f e by epsilon whole square divided by 2 n square. So n k ln 2 minus 1 by 2 into epsilon by n epsilon whole square equals to n k ln 2 minus 1 by 2 epsilon by n mu h whole square where n epsilon E n epsilon equals to n mu h. Okay, so e, you get that s that is the entropy of the system is a function of energy. The behavior is logarithmic, and the behavior if you plot this, that is this is the value of s, and if you plot it, you will get this kind of graph. Okay, one is that it is minus mu b h. This is a plus mu b h, and the Configuration is this. So this is very important graph. So I request you to remember this graph for the paramagnetic system or for if it is not mentioned as paramagnetic, but it is mentioned as half spin half particles with uh, an external in and within an external magnetic field. You, what will be the specific heat uh, or oh, sorry entropy versus E variation. Now I will tell you some more variation for the same system like entropy 
versus KB, KT by mu B. Okay. So earlier it was entropy versus E, that is energy. Here entropy versus KT by mu B. So the variation will be this. So this is another variation that entropy of spin have of paramagnet. Now another question is internal energy. Another graph is internal energy of spin half paramagnet that is E versus T. Okay. Or you can write as E by N mu B versus KT by mu B. Another one is the thermal capacity of spin half paramagnet that is CV uh, uh, with the function of T. Okay. Or CV versus T graph. So this you can remember here. And you can answer this kind of questions if you face at the examination. The next question, which I have already discussed this kind of questions in the previous video. This is very important question. It has already come in just net. That's why I'm discussing it again. A gas of in non interacting particles in thermal equilibrium at temperature T. Each particle can be in any of the possible non degenerate states of energy zero. 2 epsilon, 4 epsilon, the average energy per particle of the gas where beta epsilon is less less than 1 is how much? So first of all, you find out this state is non-degenerate states. Okay, so simply you diagram plot the uh, make this three diagram one with energy 0, another with energy 2e, another third one is with energy 4 epsilon. Now, what is the average energy value formula that E average can be written for the discrete set that is sum over of I EI to the power minus beta EI divided by sum of all the energies that is the partition function Z of the system that is sum of E to the power minus beta EI. So put this EI value for three different levels as mentioned in the question that is zero EI is zero. 0 into e to the power 0 by kbt 2 plus 2 epsilon into e to the power minus 2 epsilon by kbt plus 4 epsilon into e to the power minus 4 epsilon by kbt so here 0 this term will not be included this two term will be included so 2 epsilon take common and we are left with e to the power minus 2 epsilon by kbt plus 2 into e to the power minus 4 epsilon by kbt divided by 1 plus e to the power minus 2 epsilon by kbt plus e to the power minus 4 epsilon by kbt. And here look at the options that they are giving you the condition question that beta epsilon is very, very less than 1. Okay, so you make the condition whenever beta epsilon is very, very less than 1, that is beta that is 1 by kbt into epsilon that is very, very greater than 1. Okay. So you can write only the take the first term in the solution that is 1 minus 2 epsilon by kbt since this is very very less than 1 actually this is very very less than 1. So you can neglect 1 minus 2 epsilon by kbt since this is very very less than 1. So you are taking only 1 and also the same approximation will be here also. So you are taking only the first term that is the exponential expand this exponential of this term. So you are left with only one term from this one, two into one term from this one. So two epsilon into one plus two divided by one plus one plus one. That is two by two epsilon into three by three. That is two epsilon. So option A is the correct option. Don't feel uncomfortable to solve this kind of problems. Just give just look at the look the problem it is very easy okay just take the energy levels put the condition that has already been mentioned in the question and then process do the correct calculation and you will get the right answer the next question and these questions are of five marks so these are very important question to attempt and make the difference between the successful person and the unsuccessful person. The next question, I will give you a very easy trick for this kind of question to solve. The question is a one dimensional chain consists of a set of n rods, each of length a when stressed by a rod 
each rod can align either parallel or perpendicular to the length of the chain. The energy of the rod is minus epsilon when aligned parallel to the length of the chain and is plus epsilon when perpendicular to it. When the chain is in thermal equilibrium at temperature T, its average length is Na by 2 Na. Na divided by 1 plus e to the power minus 2 epsilon by kVT. And if this uh, option is looking same, so we are taking as plus. So Na divided by 1 plus e to the power plus 2 epsilon by kVT. Okay. So first find out how to solve this kind of question. Just they are questioning you. What is the chain in thermal equilibrium at temperature T? The average length will be how much? Okay. So they are questioning you the average of any quantity. Now in statistical mechanics, average of any quantity, how do you find out? We have already discussed. So remember that formula and put here in this question. That is the mean length of the chain that L can be written as A into e to the power beta epsilon divided by the total energy of the system. That is e to the power beta epsilon plus e to the power minus beta epsilon. Okay. So A divided by 1 plus e to the power minus 2 beta epsilon. So the average length for this is for the unit section, unit 1 particles or the 1 segment. So for the n number of segment, it is n into A divided by 1 plus e to the power minus 2 epsilon by kVT. So the correct answer is C. So option C is the correct answer. Okay. Now the next question. A gas molecule of mass M are confined in a cylinder of radius R, height L. R is greater greater than L kept vertically in the earth gravitational field. The average energy of the gas at low temperature is how much? In the last video, we have discussed the same kind of question, but there the problem was find out the pressure of the system. That's why we have to find out the partition function. Then we have to take the F that is Helmholtz free energy. Then we did this integral, uh, this did this formula that is P equals to minus del F by del V. But here they are not in, uh, telling you to find out the pressure. They are telling you the to find out the average energy. Do you have to again find out the partition function to get the average energy? Yes, you can. This is a standard formula. You can find out the average energy or you or by this formula del del beta of Z, ln Z. But here I will give you a trick that you don't have to solve for the average energy. What you have to do, you have to apply real theorem. Okay. So let's understand the average energy from the Boseman um, uh, equipartition theorem. We can write the average, uh, not Boseman, the equipartition theorem. We can write average energy is number of degrees of freedom into half kVT. Okay. So for each degrees of freedom, the energy average energy is assigned for that degrees of freedom is half kVT. So the number of degrees of freedom, it, if it is three, three dimensional, then 3 into half kVT, that is 3 by 2 kVT. It is 6 dimensional, then 6 into half kVT. If it is n dimensional, then n into half kVT. So this is the average energy we get from the equipartition theorem. Now for the translation, we can have 3 degrees of freedom, one along x direction, another along y, another along z. So T average is 3 by 2 kVT or 3 into half kVT. Now the potential energy is along z direction that is v equals to mgz so only one degrees of freedom here available so that kinetic energy average that is v average potential energy average v average that is kvt kinetic energy average t average equals to 3 by 2 kvt so e average equals to t plus v average that is 5 by 2 kvt so the for the one particle e average equals to 5 by 2 kvt and for the n particles, E average equals to 5 by 2 into n kVT. So by applying the Virial theorem, you don't have to put the partition function and you don't have to calculate anything. Next question, it is also discussed the concepts in probability theory in mathematical physics lecture. Also statistical mechanics lecture I have uh, discussed. 
the question is in a series of five cricket matches one of the captain calls hates every time when the toss is taken the probability that he will win three times and loss two times is 1 by 8 5 by 8 3 by 16 5 by 16 so number of this is bi binomial distribution the formula for that is if p of x denote the probability of event that are getting the number of successive events then probability of that event uh, successful events can be written as p x equals to n factorial divided by n minus x factorial into x factorial p to the power x into q to the power n minus x where n is the total number of trials x is the number of success desired p is the probability of getting success in one trial q is 1 minus p that is probability of getting failure in one trial so here the number of trials so this total n equals to 5 or total tosses is 5 number of success that is here earlier we take it as x it, it has been here is taken as r r is 3 so probability of success getting head if we take it as success then p equals to 1 by root 2 and getting a tail if it is a failure then 1 minus 1 by 2 that is also half so put the formula that is 5 c3 that is ncr into p to the power r into q to the power n minus r so you get the uh, answer as p equals to 5 by 16 so option d is the correct option now next question and this is a conceptual question the entropy of a system is is related to the accessible phase space gamma by s equals to kbl and gamma where gamma is function of E and V and E and V are the energy number of particles to volume respectively. From this one can one can conclude that gamma that is the entropy of the uh, this is the phase space accessible phase space volume does not change during the evolution of two equilibrium oscillates oscillates during the evolution to equilibrium is a maximum in equilibrium is a minimum in equilibrium. As entropy is maximum in the equilibrium, gamma is also maximum in the equilibrium. Okay, so actually, the out of the what is the physical meaning that out of several possible micro states, macro states, which macro states are most probable? The macro states that are most probable that have maximum number of micro states, and maximum number of micro states, what they do they have the maximum number of energy values okay so this kind of questions you may face the next question is consider a system of three spins that is s1 s2 s3 each of which can make values plus one and minus one the energy of the system is given by e equals to minus j into s1 s2 plus s2 s3 plus s3 s1 where j is a positive constant the minimum energy and the corresponding number of spin configuration are respectively j and 1 3 minus 3 j and 1 minus 3 j and 2 minus 6 j and 2 so here what you have to do they are given you the three spins that is s1 s2 s3 and this can have values plus 1 or minus half minus 1 you have to find out the minimum energy first so out of several configuration the energy of the system that is minus j s1 s2 plus s2 s3 plus s3 s1 you can take all the s1 s2 s3 as plus 1 and all the s1 s2 s3 as minus 1 after taking all the s1 s2 s3 plus 1 we get total energy is minus cj and for minus 1 also we get total energy equals to minus 3j now if we take any of them are different like suppose i am taking s1 equals to plus 1 s2 equals to minus 1 s3 equals to plus 1 so the e that is energy value is plus j and now to, suppose i am taking another configuration like s1 equals to minus 1 s2 equals to minus 1 s3 equals to plus 1 and e i am getting as minus j so here what will be the configuration other energies apart from this energy that is for when the all the s1 s2 s3 are plus one and minus one they are giving all this minus 3j and all other configuration are giving you greater than minus 3j plus j or minus j so this is the minimum energy and the this is the degeneracy of the system is two 
okay so the minimum number of energy and corresponding number of spin configurations that is region ratio that is 2 so c is the correct option so what you have to do this kind of problems are actually very much coming in the net gate exam so what you have to do whenever you face this kind of problems just put the values take all the possible configurations if you are it is not possible to take all take some of it and compare it which you are getting as minimum energy and that minimum energy configuration will give you the correct result so friends this is for you to practice and comment in the answer uh, comment section your answer the question is an unbiased dice is thrown thrice time three times successfully the probability of that uh, the numbers of dots on the uppermost surface added up to 16 is 1 by 16 1 by 36 1 by 108 1 by 216 i am reading this again an unbiased dice is thrown three times Success, successively, the probability that the number of dots on the uppermost surface add up to 16. Okay, so you are tossing three times a dice, and the probability that you are getting after the three times or three tosses, you are getting total 16 number. What will be that probability? So, comment your answer. So friends, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, don't forget to like, don't forget to share, subscribe to our channel, join our telegram channel for daily quizzes, research, research papers, and also join our test series for evaluating your performance. And you can also register for test from our site. Thank you very much.